So I'll let y'all choose what y'all want to see next. I have both Sagrada and number nine. If you have questions about either, feel free. Get a quick drink. Today's drink of choice is orange juice. And then if I need it, I do have a V8 energy drink sitting to the side as well. So let me know what y'all want to what y'all want to see me play now. If you want to learn a game, look at stuff. Sagrada, I do have a couple of the mini expansions in it. Um, I don't use them as often on stream just because it's a little bit harder that way. Because there's a couple of other colors and tools that are harder for y'all to play along with. But we can see what they are if you want to see some of that. Number nine is always quick and easy to play. It may hit the table a couple times tonight. But if you have any preferences, please let me know. And like I've talked about already is, yes, tonight is my first affiliate stream, so you're starting to earn uh, channel points, which I call uh, slices of joy, because I hopefully, when you're here, you're playing along and I'm helping spread joy into your life so you're you're receiving some joy in some way and hopefully whenever you leave you leave with a smile on your face and joy in your hearts but if you if you have suggestions for how to how you want me to have you redeem those points for whatever it be be it the hydrates and other such things let me know I'm open to suggestions I'm open to changing changing some of the things I have and just playing with it because I, I know uh, all of our channels are a little bit different um, and it's fun to see different things I know I've talked about up here above my shoulder you can see it looks like kind of a, a little parrot colors that is a parrot onesie that eventually y'all can earn enough uh, points to make me wear for a stream and yes it has a full hood with the little parrot eyes on it and beak um, it's multicolored kind of looks like feathers I did have to modified a little bit so it fit better of course but that makes it all the more fun because it's now personable um i think what i'll do i'll play a quick game of number nine since i'll show just how fast it plays then we'll move on to sagrada unless y'all say otherwise unfortunately you can't stick around since dinner just finished but i'll try to swing by again later well thank you for stopping by while you could i hope you enjoy your dinner and i hope you're you have a chance to show show up later um, and if you do, hopefully you can play along then as well, because I know you have some of these games. I've seen some of these games get played on your stream, and y'all hit affiliate not too long ago as well. So I appreciate uh, stopping by and sharing the love and the support you show for everyone else. Okay, there we go, that one block. We'll do a quick game of number nine. Oop, this actually got tilted. I'm a little surprised this can't open that much. It usually doesn't do this. But show you just how easy it is to clean up this box. Because this insert is one of the nicer inserts for a game. For the custom shapes it has. Just to show you how easy the rules are for this game. The rule book is literally a front and back. That fast, that simple. So the box itself comes with enough for up to four players. It says it's for ages eight and up. But of course, the way it plays, if you have multiple copies or you have other people watching, you can play along. And we got just saying, okay, Jay, we're going to do some drive-by highs. Of course, go, go say hi to everyone else. I appreciate you being here as long as you're able. And, and thanks for the congrats. Um, yes, I will see you soon. Hopefully we can collaborate again, play something together on stream. And hopefully I can join in and watch your stream some more as well. So thank you for stopping by. And say, say hi to everyone else for me. Um, since I, I'm streaming a little bit longer today, I can't do my drive buys and say hi to everyone. But thanks for coming by. So in number nine, we have this small deck of cards. Pretty small. But pretty easy to use. It actually has all of the numbers twice on the deck as long as I don't drop the cards 
Now each time we draw a card, we take one of those numbers out of the box and add it to our, uh, how do they call it? Our display. Now, at the end of the, oh, thank you, Jess. Uh, so at the end of the game, we're gonna score based on the numbers in our display at first how high they are. So the base of your display, basically whatever sits on the table, doesn't score points. But you also need to build your base up to, to stack on top of it. So you have to find the right balance of what you put on the table and what you stack up. Everything on the first first layer of your display above what's on the table scores one times whatever the number is of the tile. You go two, two stacks up or two levels up, it's two times, and then three times and so on for every level up based on the number of the tile. Now, the rules for this are yours. Every new tile that gets placed, so say we already have a six here, every new tile has to touch an existing tile, if it's on the same level, by at least one square. All of these have little squares on them, so you can see how they're tiled out, even if you look at the back. Then if they're on, say you could kind of squeeze it in like that. Now, if, they're, if you want to stack them, everything that stacks or is on top of another level, it has to be on top of at least two different tiles or two different, I'm not gonna say two different numbers because you could have two of the same number together. So you could have like two sixes here to create a base. As long as whatever you put on top overlaps at least two tiles, it's safe. But if it only overlaps one, you can't do that. So you can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna build straight up six on top of six. You can't do that because it's not at least two different tiles. That's all there is. Draw a card, place the tile into your display at the end of the game, score whatever level they're based on. High score is best. So you know, by the end of the game, you're gonna draw every number twice. So I, like I've usually played this in five, like five minutes, ten minutes on stream. It's so if you have your own copy, play along, or just tell me how you would play it. So I'm just gonna flip them here on screen. Actually, maybe I, maybe these will show up a well. Let's flip them out here. So first off, we have our seven tile. Build your base right there. First base, first card always has to go on the table, no matter what. Well, actually, first two based on the rules. Uh, how's the five sit? Sits like that. So next up, since we know we can't stack it, we have to go around it. So this is where you start kind of deciding, okay, how do I want to fit this around everything? Do I want to build a wider base? Do I want to intertwine everything? Because remember, as, as, as soon as you start doing this and leaving gaps, it makes it a little bit harder to build up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build it out this way, touching. So then hopefully I don't have as many gaps in the middle of everything. So as long as it's touching at least one square aligned up, you're, all, you're more than okay. Next up we have nine. Unfortunately this came, came out early, so it's a little bit harder to score more points with it. And the way this is set up, I can't overlap it enough because you can't have anything empty under an upper layer either. So what I can do here is just really reinforce my base square chunk. Next up we have our zero. This is the roughest one to place. Always a zero. You can never score points on it. So it's really just a solid base that you can build up. Um, so you're always going to have a gap in it. So just kind of how you want to bring that gap into play, build around it. So I'm just going to build on the outside here. Next up, we have an eight. So this is not a bad time to start considering, okay, I could start really laying this into these gaps on this upper layer and building up this layer. Because each of these orientations covers at least two pieces below it. Now, but you do have to keep in mind other sh the shapes of the other numbers, how they those come into play. Will that block you? Will that help you? Will it be worse? But eight, it's, it, you don't. At this point, it's like I don't want to waste that eight and not score it at all. I'm gonna try. Oh, it's a tough choice. 
I'm gonna try this orientation. Yes, no. No, I'm gonna try this. Knock on wood. Next up we have our two. It's just a plain two. Um, I could attempt to squeeze it in that top to really then start building my next layer, but then it makes it hard to put much of anything else on this this bait on this um level. It's a low point piece, and so I'm not going to stress about it as much. I'm going to actually try to build it into because you can't flip them over. They have to stay. They will always be that exact shape. Let's see if I can expand on some of this area in a good way. Because back here is not a good option because I've already blocked off that corner. Yeah, I think I will risk it. Maybe I can place a zero there or something to really build up the base a little bit higher. It's going to be hard. Oh, and another two. Okay, well, at least it's getting these out of the way. Uh, do I expand that right now? No, I think I'm going to expand this side a little bit more. Try. Probably not my best option, but it is what it is. And we have our other eight. So it would be cool if I could just place that eight on top of that two. But like I said before, it has to be on at least two different tiles. So that's not an option anymore. But what I can do, shift it like that, catty cornered. Goes around that. Layers to score that. Another zero. Like I talked about before, this just kind of becomes another waste option, unfortunately. Maybe I can expand this way now. And a three. So that's an option since it would touch two. too much. Not liking it a lot, but I do need to build up higher, so I'm just going to go for it. And a one. And a one. And a two. And a two. I could kind of sneak it in here, but if I do that, that blocks almost other all other choices to build this way. I'm not going to do that, so maybe I can stack with that three a little bit later. And we got a six. This, at this point, it stacks on two eights, two different tiles, so we're more than okay to stack there. A seven. Oh, can I fit it? Nope. Yeah, the seven's one of the wonkiest shapes to deal with. It is very awkward. So I'm just going to do this. Because I don't have a good base, good spot for it. 
Next up are four. Well, at least I can stack that right there. And another six. Do that, go down to two different tiles there, so it counts. Uh, four again. Hmm. I may have blocked myself in a little too much over here, but I do know I have another one to find. I've not seen three twice yet. There's another nine coming up sometime soon. Another five. So some of this game is planning ahead and seeing what you can come up with that has a lot of options. Oh, does that do enough for me? I don't think so. Try that. Not probably not the best option. And a three. Well, now we do know that we have a nine, a five, and a one coming up after this left. So we can plan ahead. Get a one there. One can get at least go to the middle. So five and nine can go. Yeah, I may not be able to get many of these next ones higher up. But it is what it is. Unless y'all see a better spot for me to put it, I'm about to just put it somewhere random. Because I don't think I can stack high enough. Oh, actually, right there. Ooh, almost didn't see that. Next up are five that we talked about. Like we talked about, it has to have a, be on at least two others. No empty spaces under it. And we know we have a nine and a one coming up. Really, all we can really do is plan to at least score that nine on top of that stuff. Oh, we got a one. We can at least score the one there. Score the not take the nine that we knew was coming and squeeze it in here. Okay, so now we score. So anything on the base does not score. One level up is one, two levels up, two so on. Well, two times the number, so two times, uh, second highest level is my six right now. Six, six, and one, that's 13, 26. All these, this level are one each. So 26 plus nine is 35, plus four is 39, plus one is 40, 43, 46, 54, 62. That's how you play. That's how you score. Pretty straightforward. Pretty easy. 
And as you can see, let's see, Jess left about six. So it's, that was 15 minutes to really go over the score and, and play. So that, that's how easy it is. So what I may do, pull out Shigarda now. And maybe we'll pull this out between some of the other games again. I do hope everyone is doing well today. I know it's a little bit quieter. It is Monday. Um, hopefully your Monday went well. It was not too busy or hectic or draining. And I hope that being here brings you joy, helps be a little bit uplifting as you learn about a game, play a game, or just in general, hang out and chat with everyone. For those who don't know me, I am jbird underscore the word. You can call me Jaybird. You can call me Justin. I really enjoy games. My favorite hobby. And I like to spread joy while playing. Be as inclusive as possible. Invite everyone to the table. Help teach everyone. Hopefully you leave with a smile on your face. Uh, some of you may have seen me at conventions before, especially before everything shut down. I am a volunteer uh, with Weird Giraffe Games, both at their booth and conventions and on their Discord server. So you may have seen me talking there, you may have seen me at a convention teaching some games, helping sell a game or two, playtesting games, helping do a little bit of design on games. Um, I also am active on Instagram daily, posting pictures of what I've been playing or new products I've acquired be it like today i posted about some board game blankets i i received from my kickstarter i might talk about what i'm backing what i'm designing what i've been playing where maybe i'm traveling somewhere uh, board game related i try to kind of keep it open and honest and just be inviting for everyone let's bust out sagrada now But like I've said before, I do have a couple expansions packed into this box. We will not be using all of the expansion stuff. I'll try to keep it primarily to the base, hopefully. Um, so that is why I have more boards than usual. This is The base game is typically one to four players. I have the five to six player expansion. I do like how I looked up to see what song was currently playing, and it says it's Keep Smiling. So indeed, I hope everyone is able to keep smiling, enjoying their day. Maybe you're enjoying a nice dinner. Maybe it's the middle of the afternoon or it's late evening for you. Whenever it is, I hope you are smiling right now and enjoying yourself. So, uh, because it matches closest to the colors in my logo, um, I'm going to go... Well, it's kind of a debate between two of them because I do have, have a lot of purples in my logo with a little bit of blues. This is the blue dye. This is a lot of purple. It might help stick out a little bit more if I go with the one, more blue one, so it sticks out from the purple lettering. But again, typically, you'll get one of these boards, stained glass boards, when playing Sagrada. I'm going to set these aside so I can get to all the opponents. But we'll go over how to play as I set up, how you can play along. I've actually done this where you can play along with me on Instagram before, where I posted my stories, the different dice and the dice rolled and how you can use them and play along. You don't even actually need your own board. You can just use pen and paper and write in the colors and numbers that you're using. Um, that is why I have this piece of paper here because I've shown off how to do it without the actual game so you can play along as you watch. All you have to do is essentially take a piece of paper, draw a five by five grid, and then have a space one through 12 where you can write the dice used for those rounds in case you need to go back but overall it's pretty simple to do that uh let's see what's down here oh yes that's what i'll do i'll pull out so this is from one of the expansions keep that in mind but i came with a little cardboard like dice rolling tray in place to put them all in i'll use that on stream today but i won't need all the extra dice because those are from the expansions extra beads I won't need as well. When you play solo, you don't typically need the beads. We do need the bagel dice and the stuff in here. 
This is a very well done insert as well. As you can see, it has a place for everything and it fits just right. Uh, so yeah, the expansions I have are Sagrada Passion and the five to six player expansion. I'll set most of that aside. So yeah, Passion came with some other cardboard extensions of your stained glass with punch outs in it. We'll not be using those today, but just to show them off. Uh, let's see. I'll pull one of these out. Don't necessarily need it. Typically, you'll use these more in a multiplayer game to show your score compared to everyone else right there on a score tracker. But during the game, we'll be using the side to track dice. So this is that 1 through 10 you would write on your paper if you're playing with pen and paper. Uh, oh, this Ziploc is tearing, so that's why I can't get it open. There we go. So I'll just show you one of those. Just a little small, little round disc. Nothing on one side, no number. The other side is 50. Basically, if you get past 50 points, you turn it over, go back around the track. We'll deal with that later. I got a bag of dice. We need that. Those are cards we'll pull out in a second. So, something else I have in this box that's not standard. I basically have, well, for when I do it on Instagram, I have these cards where I wrap round one and put the dice on it so people can see what I, I rolled. Of course, we don't need that today. Uh, that's expansion cards. Expansion, expansion. Make sure which you got to verify which are expansion cards. So we'll try to use the base cards so it's easier for you all to learn. And of course, we could play again with the expansion included if you all decide to play along and want to try again. Uh, there'll be tools we can use. I'll get to those in a second. Let me find. That'll be a good one. Color color. That's a good one. Because typically during a, a standard game, you have personal goals and you have public goals. So on the backs of these, there are some that are blue dice, some that are gray dice. It tells you the difference between them. So I'm trying to go through and find ones of the different types. So currently we have two blue, and we'll pl also play with two. Uh, we'll play with one of the publics to make it easy. We won't worry about high score. We'll play. Uh, so pull for that. There we go. I'll play that one. Yeah, I'll make sure it was one of those or two of those each before we go forward. Because we can put what hurt to play two. So two public, two private. So yeah, two of each. Yeah, we can go one more then. And since we're celebrating hitting affiliate, Twitch is purple. We'll go with a purple one on that one. I'll show you what it is in just a second. So there'll be different goal cards. Um, I chose that purple one because it's in my lo it's in my slogan and it's Twitch. And let me get some of the tools. I think we're going to use two, three. That's a good one. Try to pick ones that can easily be done on stream and you can do on your own without needing me to redo something for you. That's a solid one for all to use. Don't want to have to make all erase stuff, so I'm not going to do moving stuff. I'm going to do more of the 
Okay, we can do those three. Be easy to do on stream for y'all. Sorry about that. Took a quick second to make sure we got this right for y'all. And then we'll show off what these mean and what they do. Uh, let's put them in order this way. And we also need to pick a stained glass card. Try to make sure it's not an expansion one. So if you're playing along, you'll be able to grab your own copy as well. But do let me know if you're planning to play along. It's cool to know who's playing and who is playing with me. This one's always fun. Okay, so if you're playing along, we're going to be using, let me switch so y'all can see it better. Okay, so we're going to use the Symphony of Light card. So what this card represents is your stained glass that you're trying to form throughout the game. Wherever there is a certain color or certain number is what you need it to be. Now, only those colors and only those numbers can be placed onto those locations. So this card is not the easiest of cards, but it also has a lot of variety to it and gives you a lot of direction for beginner players because there are rules to placing die during the game. Because during the game, you cannot place the same color die next to its same color. So say for that yellow spot, you don't want to put yellow next to it because then it won't allow you to place the yellow because two yellows can't be next to each other. And same with numbers. You can't have two of the same number next to each other. And that's just adjacent diagonals are okay. So, for example, you don't want a two in this yellow spot because that one needs a two up there. So simple rules, but it's tricky to complete. So let me go over. We do have a couple of tools we can use tools in the solo game actually use the die from previous rounds so you won't be able to really use these in the first round as easily but what we can do so in this top corner it has a color you have to place a die from a previous round in that corner to be able to use this card's ability this one is the grinding stone so if you place one of the extra die from a previous round that was not used that is green onto this card after drafting or basically picking a die to put in your window it allow you to flip the die to its opposite side. So basically flipping the number to its opposite number. Which is pretty nice when you need certain numbers and you can't and they're not rolled. We do have the cork backed straight edge. So after you're drafting a die, basically you can take one of the yellow die that from a previous round, place it on the to this card, place the die in a spot that is not adjacent to another die. So typical rules when playing the game is you always have to place a die adjacent to at least one previously placed die. So this case kind of lets you break the rules a little bit in the early game. Helps out a lot if you have something that either you can't place or you really want to open up your options. Because then that die placed counts for placing future adjacent dice. And then our third tool is our Grozing Flyers. So after drafting a die, basically picking one of the die to use... It would allow you to increase or decrease the value of the drafted die by one. So to say you took a four, you could turn it to a five or a three, but you'd have to use a purple die from a previous round. Place it here. Now there's a little tricks. Part of the nice thing about using the previous die, um, because the previous die act as the AI system and the points that you're trying to beat. So each round we're going to be rolling so many die, ones we don't use because we only are allowed to select so many. They go basically to the AI, to the extra player that's not in the game, and they're scoring based on those die. So actually taking those die back away helps your score and beating them. Now we do have four objectives for scoring. Let me show you two of them. Uh, we'll start with this one. This one might come from the expansion, but it, it's a really good one for beginning players, at least. So this is the column shade variety. So every column 
with no repeated values on the dice earn your energy four points so if you just keep in mind oh I already have a two in that column I have a one in that column I don't want to place those again because if I do I don't get points for that column and then next up we have kind of the opposite instead of going for columns we're going for rows and we're going for colors instead of numbers here so for row color variety uh, every row with no repeated colors can earn you six points so these two really work well together in that you can uh, really hit potentially all the columns, all the rows, as long as you really divide up all your stuff and really keep it evenly spread throughout the, all the different types of things you're using. And then we're going to, because we talked about the purple, it's Twitch. We're celebrating affiliate. And it's in my slogan as part of my logo, uh, the shades of purple. So private sum of values on purple dice. So for every purple dice on your window, you score a point. But not just for the die, you score it based on the pip value. So if you have a six purple, you get six points for that purple pipped purple die. If there's only three pips, three points for that to die. Pretty straightforward. And then we have this special one. So this is also based on the pips on the die, but this is called the tunnel. So you sum up the values on dice in the shaded area. So these top three section and the bottom three, whatever die go there, you're gonna score whatever pip is on them. No matter what color, no matter the pip, you score based on the pip. Pretty straightforward, easy to use. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna roll four dice each round and we're gonna take two of them, put it into our window. So if you're gonna play along with the pen and paper, as you can see, well, it's, sorry, not 5x5, five five. it's a 4 tall, 5 wide window. Now, if you want to match up and play the exact same window, you can. Probably easier if you don't have the game. So what I'll do real quick, if you're doing that, I'm going to place these under the zoom real quick. So you can try to match up how you would draw that. There's 2 in that upper left corner, 5 in the upper mid one in the upper right. Second row is yellow, then a six, then purple, then a two, and then a red. The third row, far left, does not have any specific need. Then you have blue, then a four, then a green, and no specific need. Last row, you have a no specific need corner, a three, a blank middle, a five specific need and then a blank bottom corner if you have any questions on that feel free to ask otherwise we'll get started playing hopefully you can play along if you're doing it on pen and paper you can just write the die that you pick into that space you could put like a y6 for a yellow six die what I'll do here I'll switch this back so you can actually see what I'm doing a little bit better you should be able to see the die I roll pretty easily in this tray right here if not feel free to speak up and say hey Jaybird what you doing there tell me what you got tell me how to play tell me what we're doing so we're going to score points at the end of the game based on these four cards and then Part of the way I play on stream solo, I kind of break the scoring in a little bit instead of scoring points for ones uh, a certain way for empty spaces. Every empty space, negative one point at the end of the game. So try to fill your whole window. If you use a tool card, it's okay. But for every tool card you don't use, you can score two additional points. So right now, you're going to start with six points no matter what. Give you a little bonus. So I'm going to take this bag, draw four die randomly. Now the color of die are all evenly distributed in the bag. We have yellow, blue, purple, green, and red dice all evenly distributed. And then we're going to roll them into the tray and then start picking. So we're going to start playing now. If you have any questions, please let me know in chat. If you want to just hang out, chat, talk about your day, feel free to do that as well. So let me make sure I can see these because that side is hard to see around. So we start with a lot of low numbers. Now the first die you place has to be around the outside of your window. 
So nothing in the middle six, but anywhere on the outside edges. And remember, the second die you place has to be adjacent to it in some way, not diagonal, directly adjacent. So we might consider, oh, we have a red right here. We have that red one. But you don't want to put a one right here because there's a one in this corner. And you also don't want the red one here because it blocks your red. So keep both of those in mind when you're choosing these things. We do have a yellow over here. We could get going. It's not going to block our two or our six. Not a bad option. And it doesn't necessarily block us from scoring any of these other things or keeping us low. Now we do have a green two. We could score in this upper corner. So that's where I'm kind of feeling here. Maybe we could go ahead and start this corner and then work our way inward because otherwise we're pretty low numbers. If you disagree, feel free to speak up or play it your own way and let me know how you do at the end. So I'm going to put that green two in the corner and then my second die has to go adjacent to it. So there's only two options, to the right or below it. Now we talked about this has to be yellow, so I'm going to use that yellow there immediately. Now what happens is these two dice we did not select, we're going to take here, put into the round one slot. So currently our AI system, or who we're playing against, has three points for the end of the game. So this is part of what we can do to keep them from scoring too much, is give them the lower numbers. And that's how each round goes. Ten rounds total. We draw four dice, pick two, place them. The farther we go, it can get a little bit more trickier and you might have to make harder decisions. But it's pretty straightforward on how you play. Now, of course, some of the expansions add additional rules, add additional dice of different colors, different amounts, depending on how many players you have. There's different window options. So this does have a lot of variety to it. Every game, while it plays the same, will feel different because you're not ever making the exact same decision. So in this case, we rolled a purple one, a yellow three, a blue six, and a green two again. Now remember, we're going to score for every purple we have. And we also want to avoid having matching numbers in a column and matching colors in a row. So that, that's a lot of little steps we can keep in mind. So it's like currently where we're at, that green two doesn't really help us. So I'm going to push that to the side. Probably won't use it. Uh, the blue six isn't too bad. But if you look at the six here, you can't have blue next to it. So not a great option. But if I use that blue six on the blue, I can't do the six. So it's kind of that catch 22 if I choose that. What do I do with it? And remember, we also, we also can't place the same color next to its own color. Or place a number next to its own number. Or we could really consider using, oh, do we want to use one of these abilities already? Which would be an interesting choice. I'm not sure if it's too early to do that, though. Yeah, this definitely put us in a pickle early in the game. Okay, because I could... The green two could go here, but that already would break a column and our row because this would need a green. So we couldn't score the row variety or the column variety. The six can go here, but it would block our blue. Six can go here, of course, blocks blue. Three can't go there because it's yellow, yellow. Three could go up here. Purple could go here if I wanted it to, but no, it can't because of the one. Two ones next to each other. Purple could go up here, but it's, then it's a low number. And we're putting it into our tunnel. So this is where you may or may not get as many points as you really hoped you would get later down the line. But we make the most of it. 
because also if we want to use one of these tools, you have to use one of these up here. Currently, we only have red and, uh, red and green, which might be a little hard to see, so I'm going to push them to right here so you can see the colors a little bit better. But why is that trying to autofocus? I check something real quick. We don't want it to over focus and make it hard to see. Auto focus off. Oh, it's focused where it should be. Done. There we go. Okay. Uh, do I want to do a flip die? If I go through there, I can't do that. Can't place that one. Good. Uh, can't do that because if I want to use the green that I have already, it allows me to flip a die over. It's my only option. My one would flip to six, meaning I couldn't place the blue. I think no matter what, I'm going to break being able to score at least one column or a row. So in this instance, the column is worth less. So I'm going to break it by using the green two to flip a die over. Yeah, I think I need to flip my one to a six, because at least it's purple for that. I can't place the blue six, though, so I know that's going to go up here. I could either score the yellow. Well, actually, I can repeat the yellow in that column now. It's still a different number, but I can't put three next to that. But what I can do now is it's meant to put three there. Color shade columns, all okay. Now, because I used this tool, typically in a solo game, you can only use each tool once per game. So I'm going to rotate to show I've used that tool, and I can't use it again. So that was round two. We'll move on to round three. It has gotten a little quiet in here tonight. I hope everyone is still doing okay. Maybe you're lurking. Maybe you're working. Maybe you're just watching. Making dinner or something. Either way, I appreciate you being here. Okay, so we've rolled a purple five, blue six, blue two, red three. Now again, we run in the same situation. We can't, we shouldn't place the blue six here because blue is next to it. Can't do this six here because we got six next to it already. Can't put the six down here. The five shouldn't go here because it'll block my purple. So it's really playing all, into all these decisions. And if I wanted to use a tool, I would need purple or yellow up here already, which I don't have. So I have to just purely use what I already have in stock. So I think, so I want to use that, okay. 
what I can do is play this two first, three down low. But that does waste some good numbers. But playing the six isn't great. Playing the five can't do. Yes, I think my best option is playing two under the blue space. And then this needs a three. So I'll place it there. That does open me up pushing into the middle now as opposed to hanging out on the outside. Unfortunately, that does give me two big numbers for our AI. But one of those big numbers is a purple. So I may intentionally use a tool card later because I'd only lose two points or lose or not gain to get two points at the end for using the tool. But that's removing five points from the AI to beat them. So it's kind of one of those, hey, maybe it is worth using just for that. So we're going to roll again. We do keep pulling some purples out, but we're rolling low on them, unfortunately. Now we got to have red four, a purple one, purple two, yellow two. Let's see what we can make of these. Now remember we are pushing to have all different colors in each row and all different numbers in each column if possible because they do will help us score points at the end of the game. Uh, if I want to use that purple die for a tool it would be after taking a die decrease or increase the die by one. Which may or may not help me this round so I don't need to try too hard to do that. Now, I could, ooh, but I could do that with the red four, make it a five. But why do that when I can just place the red four immediately right there? And then that opens up the purple one right here, allow, still allowing me a two space and a six space next to it, five above. Okay, yeah, don't use the tool yet. Leave low numbers of twos for our AI friend. And that gives us a yellow for the other tool later in the game. Okay, I hope everyone is following along. And I'm not moving too fast if you are playing along. And if you don't have the game or are not able to play right now, I will be posting this to uh, YouTube at some point later uh, where you can go watch it, play along then, and then hopefully comment on how you did. Oh, we got some high numbers. Nice. A lot of sixes. What I didn't see, I did a while ago, but we did talk about a little bit is the column. I broke a column a while ago, but it's not the worst because I can still make do with what I've rolled this time. I think, well, we got some sixes. We know we're scored for purples. But I can't place the purple there. Uh, we want different colors. We sh we're going to get red in this column later, so we don't want the red six. So green six is probably our best option there. Unless we want to place it here, allowing us to expand across even more faster. Might be a better option. We're more likely to roll some sixes later. And we know we don't want it to be a five, so it's not a bad option to put there. Gives us a color for sure. Actually, yeah, I'm going to push that one to that. Opens us up a little bit more this way. Now, if I wanted to, ooh, okay. I see what I'm... So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use my purple over here. Oh, no, I need to use that higher cost purple in the AI to really take from the points. To use the tool to increase or decrease a die by one, I'm going to take this purple six, turn it into purple five, which allows me to put it in this bottom row. So now I can double score that. I can score it for both. It being purple and it being in one of those spots down low that we talked about before. So now we can push both of these to the AI. We're halfway through the game now. Five rounds down, five to go. I'm loving that 
dice sound in the microphone, even though it's not right up to it. So I got four dice in my hand. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay, we got some good numbers going here today. Uh, we got some fives and another six. Uh, again, we talked about not necessarily wanting a, a red one in that because it'd break our color variety. Uh, we might as well use one of our fives up here. Uh, color varieties. We don't want the green one. We could also use one of those other f uh, fives down here. Don't want in the middle. Can't go next to that five anyway. That red six can't go in the middle here. If I place five up here, I can go red six here. Really up my scoring potential. Or I play the blue down here to really get my number color. Well, I could go with the green one here without issue. I'm thinking I push the blue, push the red. Oh, but I already have six. So I don't want to score that six there. Because that works another call. Yeah, so what I'm going to do... Blue five, the top. Actually, I might as well do it now. I'm going to use the other last tool to place a die not adjacent to something else. Take that red six. Place it here. Because we know that won't be a six. Yeah, that'll work. And those become extras. Go to the dice bag again and draw four more. Oh, some back to the low numbers. Several threes and a one. We do find finally see another purple. Which we haven't seen in a while. Uh, of course, like we said, we score for every purple we use. So I might as well push it into that one spot. Make sure we score it. Uh, now we're looking for... Looks like we should only place a red in that row now. Up top. Shouldn't be too hard. Hopefully we get at least one more red. Hopefully it rolls what we want it to be at also. Okay, and then for these columns, we don't want the same numbers. So one, two, six. We're okay. All threes. Green and yellows can easily fit there. Oh, but they're three, so it can't go next to the red three. So I think our best option. We're looking for a yellow in this row. Might as well take it now while we got it. Okay, seven rounds down. Three to go. So we got some greens, a 1, 4, and 6 green, and a 3 purple. Now at this point in time, that purple will not be able to go anywhere because of the placement rules that you cannot place the same color next to its own color. So we automatically know we can't pick that. I'm going to place it to the side. So we're going to be placing, picking all greens. Now we can still use a green in the bottom row. Not a bad option. Uh, we did roll a green 6, which we can use right there in the middle. That's pretty... A solid option right now while we got it. It's a color we don't have in that row. And we needed that number. So next up, we need, uh, okay, we need something we're really looking for is red right across the top. So we're kind of pausing on that for a moment. We need a blue two later on the line if we're able to. And now the bottom row, we can easily use greens. Uh, don't really want a one in either row or all three. So that just kind of says we don't want that one. And we're going to place the four. Now we can't place it in the middle because of that four right there. 
We also know this won't be a five, so unless we get a six later, points will be uh, pretty bad. Almost doesn't matter which one we go in because no four on either one, so I'm just going to go into the corner and hope for the best later. That's where we're at in this game, is hoping for the best. But being that it is my first affiliate stream, I'm having a lot of fun. I can hope for the best because y'all are the best I could hope for. Oh no, that was a six. Didn't mean to tip it. Okay, now we get into shenanigans where it's harder and harder. Well, we did want a red for that top row, so that's an auto pick. Which it's nice, it's the exact same number as there. We don't have to worry about that too. Next up, we still need a yellow and a blue on the bottom row. Um, I, yeah, I think the only choice here becomes I can't place the five blue. I take the green six. I automatically break my row color, but it is points to my tunnel. If I place the one, it will break a column, no matter what. And I'm forced into finding two blues, which is harder and harder to get. I think I will take the guaranteed points or hoping for the best because I'm still hoping but now the hope is still alive for some of the options and I'm not forced to play blue on the bottom Ooh. now if that was not one of the luckiest rolls we've had all night that blue two is exactly what we asked for right here But by doing so, by doing that, we can't play the purple one, no matter what. We can't play the yellow one unless we played it there, breaking that call of row. So we didn't want that. So we're just going to play the blue one. It breaks a column, but it's legal. And it does not lose its points for not placing. So now we come to endgame, and now here's where we get to scoring. So first up, any tool you did not use get two points that's how we're playing it and how we talked about at the beginning now i used them all so no points for those then we're going to go through the scoring cards Let's start with the purples anything purple we're going to score for its pips so i got six seven eight plus five is 13. so where this that's where this is important we turn this over for scoring so to start off i have 13 on purple. Next up, we're going to score for the top three middle and the bottom three middle dice. Pip value only. So I have 3 plus 5 plus 6. It's going to be 14 plus 3 is 17 plus 6 is 23 plus 5 is 28. 28 plus 13 is 41. Next up, we have the column shades. So for each column, that every number is different in that column, you'll score four points. So let's see what I got. This first column is a two, one, six, four, so that's one column. Next up we have three, six, two, three. That column has a duplicate of three, so it will not score for a column. Next up we have a five, one, four, six, so that's another column. Next up we have a six, two, six, five, that one won't count. Last but not least, we have a 1631. That's another duplicate. It's only two columns. That's eight points. Puts me at 49 currently. Then we have the row color variety for every row across. That has all different colors, so no repeating colors. You get six points. So top row, green, yellow, blue, red, purple. That's one row. Next, we have yellow, green, purple, blue, red. That's another row. Next, we have purple, blue, red, green, yellow. That's another row. But last, we have a green, red, green, purple, blue. That will not count for that. So I have three times six is 18. So we will be flipping from the f going 49 plus 18, 50 to flip plus 17 more, 67 points. 
So now what we do, we add up the pips on the dice to see the, di the difference in how high a score you got. So your total points will be this minus the AI. See how well you actually did. This is how I like to play a solo game on stream. Of course, it is not the standard sco solo scoring. Typically in a solo game, uh, it would say... It is, let's see... The target sum is the score of the values on the die. Uh, dice used to pay for tool cards are not counted. Tally your victory points to those normal. Selecting only one of the two privates. However, you lose three victory points for any open space. If your victory point total is greater than target score, you would win. Uh, so we did score both the privates, not just a single. I like to have a little more fun with it because we all like higher scores and I'm teaching you how to play. So now we're gonna total up all the die in the pool up here and see how well the AI did. So I'm just gonna pull them all this way. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually subtract from our score to see the total difference. So let's subtract one, subtract two, three, six, Five. I'll flip it back. Six and six is twelve more. So that's going to go from fifty to thirty-eight. And then six again. So thirty-eight to thirty-two. We got two fives to subtract. Makes it twenty-two. Let's take a two off that to make an even twenty. Let's take five off take off three three and one is seven more from 15 is eight so as played we beat the AI by eight points now bear in mind we did use three of these dice so if we had left those on the AI would have scored even more so in this case if we had left those on, say that was five, three, uh, ten additional points, that would have been two points. We would have been behind, but we were scored six more points for the cards, so we would have been four points ahead. So in this case, using the tools did benefit us enough. Now, like I said, that is how I typically like to play a solo game on stream, so I can show off as many score cards as possible, and it evens it out a little bit more. Of course, if you only score one solo objective card at a time, it is harder to beat that AI system. Now, there is a difficulty meter in that you could play with more tools or less tools, um, but typically you also don't score points for not using a tool. I rebalance it a little bit for my own fun, but nothing says you have to do it when you play. So yes, that was Sagrada. A nice little dice placement, uh, stained glass window, uh, making game it is of course very vibrant dice very beautiful very straightforward rules but can be thanky uh, if you're not used to this style of play i hope you enjoyed watching or playing along i will probably clean this up and then try to select another solo game we can play because at this point i've hit the four main games i had planned uh, and i have it looks like three more hours of streaming to hang out with everyone and really celebrate finally hitting affiliate so giving all, all a chance to earn some wonderful channel points that you can spend as you choose um, based on what I've set up or if you have better suggestions for them. So I'm going to do some cleaning up real quick. Now, typically this is what, just after 8 o'clock Eastern, this is about when I typically start streaming on a Monday night for my solo gaming. For those who are just now joining or are new to the channel, I typically stream about 8 to 10 o'clock on Monday nights playing solo games that you can play along to. Or help me decide on moves. Uh, tonight I decided I would stream a lot extra. I am going to play 6 hours straight of games to have fun with y'all. To really celebrate hitting affiliate. So I started early. I started at 5 p.m. Eastern, 3 hours early. And I'll be playing at least an hour later than usual. Giving everyone a chance for may not always be able to typically stop by a chance to come say hi come chat earn a few channel points and just celebrate with me because I, 
enjoy having everyone here and chat with me. But yes, if you've just joined us today, if you've been hanging out, let me know how you're doing so far. If you're lurking, if you're eating, if you're watching, if you're playing. I appreciate you being here. I want to know how you're actually doing today. We want to be a an inclusive channel that welcomes everyone and spreads positivity and is welcoming to the whole community and supports each other as best we can. Of course, there's no harassment, no bullying, or the, or the likes. So, of course, keep everything positive in the way that you treat each other. Because, like you can see, we like to play games and spread joy here. Let's put this back together. Is it? Worry about this game is trying to fit it all back into the box, however, it was before. It is a very snug fit, especially with these expansions I bought and added into the box. Okay, right there, and now to put the dice bag back in. I guess you can't really see. Just stuffing it back in here. Yes. I think I had those over here before. Opens up a little bit more room into this pocket. Ooh, a wonderful box for it. As you know, uh, when I do my unboxings, I like to kind of see just how nice it sounds when closing and opening it, because a nice fitting box, just enough air, gives off that perfect little box fart sound. So I'm going to set these up to the side and see what else I want to play tonight.